Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To, and I hope everyone is doing fantastic. And I am talking to you guys today about VMware's killer new storage. What are we referring to? Well, it's vSAN 8 with the Express storage architecture. And for the past few days, I have had my hands on the Express storage architecture in the home lab, and I've played around with it quite a bit with a nested installation of ESXi with vCenter server installed. I wanted to give you guys a run through of enabling this Express storage architecture, why you should even care about this new software defined storage architecture released by VMware as of vSphere 8 and vSAN 8. So let's dive right into vSAN 8 and the nuts and bolts of express storage architecture enabling this new storage architecture in vSphere 8. While there are many new enhancements with vSAN 8 and the Express Storage architecture, I want to detail for you guys a couple of the enhancements that I feel are the game changers really with this release of vSAN. VMware has noted that previous versions of vSAN were really developed for the era of spinning disk. So the old hard drive technology that we had 15 years ago, spinning rust, that as we affectionately call it, and the hybrid configurations where we had that cache tier in front of the very slow antiquated hard disks that were the capacity layer of the vSAN storage solution. However, as you fast forward over a decade of technology and hardware technology, and we see where things have gotten in 2022, with that being said, VMware has moved forward with the mindset that all of the storage capacity and performance drives inside a brand new server in 2022 is most likely going to be all flash storage and quite likely much of it will be NVMe storage. With this brand new storage technology, Express Storage Architecture is able to now move forward with the performance that we can achieve with that type of storage. With the Express Storage Architecture, VMware has eliminated the notion of the two tiers of storage. In other words, the previous configurations of vSAN storage technology with a cache tier and a capacity tier now with all flash, that simply does not make sense. One of the major updates with Express Storage Architecture is just that vSAN has done away with the whole disk group concept. So now we have the concept of a storage pool and all of the devices that are configured in your vSAN storage can act as both cache and capacity drives. Now this has a lot of advantages. For instance, when you lose a cache tier drive, in previous vSAN versions, you would lose the entire disk group. Now that damage path, if you will, is eliminated because if you lose a single drive, you are not losing a specific cache tier device. VMware has also introduced a new technology called the Log Structured File System that has greatly improved the efficiency with how metadata and data are written in the vSAN software-defined storage infrastructure. They have also repositioned services in the vSAN storage stack, such as encryption and compression, so that these are much more efficient and they only happen once in the storage layer, as opposed to happening multiple times due to the data replication that happens between the hosts. So they've went in, they've done a lot of housekeeping, a lot of efficiency tuning, and all of that has resulted in a much more performant and optimized storage system. To configure the new vSAN Express storage architecture, I'm clicking at the cluster level and I'm going to click configure and under vSAN, I'm going to go to services. And under vSAN services, as you can see currently, by default, this is a brand new cluster. It says vSAN is turned off. It asks us to select a configuration type. I am going to leave the configuration set at a standard vSAN cluster, and I'm going to click the configure button. This will launch the configure vSAN storage wizard. You can see by default, VMware has the vSAN ESA or express storage architecture toggled to on by default. This is a new default. So if you are installing a Greenfield vSAN cluster, you should be looking at installing the express storage architecture if your hardware is certified for running the new vSAN ESA. I'm going to click the next button. On step two, 
we have the services configuration. Here is where we would toggle our encryption options if we want data at rest encryption or data in transit encryption. I'm going to leave those turned off for now. Now we are already halfway through the wizard and we are at step three, which is the step to claim disk. Now you will notice that I have a ton of warnings on the screen and that is because I'm running a nested vSphere installation. None of the hard disks that I have installed in my nested ESXi installation are certified for vSAN ESA. But the really cool thing, and I think this is a great point to note for home lab purposes, these are warnings. They're not a hard error message that you cannot bypass. The great thing is VMware has made this still as an optional thing. Of course, in production, you would never want to move forward with incompatible hardware. However, for home lab purposes and playing around, this is great that we can do this. Also, I want to show you guys the difference with Express Storage Architecture. I am going to add a single disk from each of the three ESXi servers in this vSAN cluster. And I'm going to show you guys that I can do that now. I'm going to expand the 100 gig disks that I have configured on each ESXi host. I'm going to check the top box, which automatically selected all of the hosts and that particular disk. However, as you know, we are simply adding a single disk on three hosts. However, we can do that with vSAN ESA. I'm going to click Next. On step four, we are at the Create Fault Domains. Here, we could create additional fault domains if we wanted to do that. However, I'm just going to leave this at the default. So we're in a single fault domain in this configuration. And as quickly as that, I am already at the step number five, which is Review the Configuration. As soon as I click the Finish button, we're going to notice the task kick off in our vCenter server, and we're going to watch the process as it completes the implementation of the new vSAN Express Storage Architecture. As you can see already, we've got the vCenter server tasks that are kicking off in our vSphere client. We can see that we are reconfiguring the vSAN cluster. It's updating the vSAN configuration across the hosts in the cluster, and we can see all of those tasks begin to progress and complete. We can see now that the disks are being added to each of the hosts in the vSAN cluster and the cluster configuration is nearing completion. And just in a couple of seconds after I made that mention, the cluster configuration for the new Express Storage architecture has completed successfully. We have no error messages in our recent tasks, which is a great sign. I'm going to click the vSAN cluster again, and I'm going to navigate down. Now we have more options available. I'm going to click the disk management, and I'm going to show you guys what we have available in our disk management just to verify that we were able to enable this Express Storage architecture with a single disk. You can see I had two other disks that I had added to this nested ESXi installation. However, I added a single disk and was able to enable this express storage architecture. I think this is one of the coolest technologies to play around with in the home lab. And it's very practical if you want to get into a home lab environment with multiple nodes, shared storage, and high availability having a software defined storage solution such as vSAN 8 that is able to do amazing things with very little hardware it's a great solution for a lab environment what do you think about vmware's killer new storage solution vSAN 8 express storage architecture it is a game changer in the world of vSphere and software defined storage solutions i think it's also a great option for a home lab as you can buy a vmug subscription for 200 bucks a year and get full licensing for both vSphere 8, vSAN 8, and many other enterprise solutions in the VMware catalog. It's a great option, one of the best values in home lab period, hands down. I highly recommend that. Please do check out my other videos covering vSphere 8. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Please do like this video, subscribe to the channel, and as always, I'll see you guys soon.